you know, I asked you last year at Comic Con if you were voicing anyone else, any bounty hunters, and you're like, I can't tell you. I'm like, I bet it's boss. Can you say that's an interesting theory? <laughs> yes. And I posted that interview up online, and everybody's like, you're an idiot. Why would you voice boss? And I was like, watch, I'm going to be right. And everybody's like, no, you're wrong. It's going to be Boba Fett. And uh, you were boss. And they all had to eat their hats. <laughs> Yeah, I did Annika the Far and uh, uh, Queen Karina, the Genosian Queen. I really loved doing that one too. But boss, man, I, I never would have, I never would have anticipated the response that fans have to that particular character. But it's really, it's really strong. I mean, almost a. Uh, I'd say almost a quarter of the, the pictures that I'm signing are boss pictures. I mean, kids really love the clones, they're really into those, but man, a lot of fans, a lot of the older fans especially, um, they are loving boss. They're, they're psyched that he's, that he's talking and that he's involved in the stories. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a great there's a great romance and, and fascination with, uh, with these bounty hunters. Each one is very interesting, very uh, uh, unique and... Uh, and it's a, it's a big part of season two. Um, with with Bosk's voice, I mean, it's very uh, reptilian. Uh, I was, I was going to ask how much of that is, is you, because it sounds like it's all you. Yeah, yeah, that one's all me. Um, it, you know, I, I usually find a way to uh, to modify my voice. I mean, even... Uh, we don't do like that. Where they don't have to modify that. I, I try to do. I do a lot of creature sounds. And that kind of stuff. That I try to make it all right there, so they don't have to fuss with it too much. <laughs> yeah, it saves them a lot of money and time. It does. It, it just gets them what they need, uh, and I do it in a way that, that doesn't rip up my throat, and everyone gets what they want. A lot yeah. Um, but this season, the season premiere... Uh, Have you seen it? I haven't. It's awesome. I saw it yesterday for the uh, first time. I, I want to see it bad. But, uh, my, I mean, it's, it's the... It's, it's all for me now. Right, it's, it's, uh, it's the rookies. Uh, from the rookies episode, the prequel, showing how the day, how they were trained, uh, how they passed the training, which they just about did. And, uh, and then Camino and attack. Ventress comes involved, and it, 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 it's, uh, it, it's, it's got personal stories about them that, that's small, and that's actually kind of heartbreaking, really good. It, but it's, it's emotional. And then they've also got a lot of epic battle stuff going on, too. That it's, it, it's very cinematic, and it, it's really, it really steps up what they've, what they've achieved already in season two. In, in a really incredible way. I, I think fans are going to be nuts. There is a moment. I won't tell you what that moment is. When we were watching it, where, where I... I, I, I literally shouted and said, "What?" Like and when it happens, you'll know what moment that is. But it's it's incredible. But it's it's but the whole thing is fantastic. But it's it's it's, it's just the beginning of, of a really fantastic scene. <laughs> I'm, I'm terribly excited. Really, you, you won't be disappointed. Um, See it in high def. Um, get it. You got to get it in high def. Um, I love high def. With. Uh, I mean, I mean, you're the rookie. You're, you're all those guys. Oh yeah. What is it like? Was it? Did you have to go back to the original episode to yeah. see what you did for all of those other guys? Yeah, I, I had to listen through that, and then we have to kind of uh, make sure that we've established the flavor of each one of these guys before we start out, and then with a really clone. Heavy episode like that. For most of the scenes, we'll just record each one separately, straight through, just to maintain the integrity of, of the characters. That's really important. I think it's really what it's really what what kids and fans key into about the clones is that they seem unique. I mean, let's say. I mean, I, I've had people ask me, "Are there new helmets coming? Are there new are there new tattoos?" I mean, they, they, they're, they're, really, they're really into the individualization of these clones. And so it's a big issue um, for the show, uh, for Dave Filoni, our director, for the writers, and for me, to try to make these guys seem individual. Because the whole story of the war and, and, the, and the tragedy of what is unfolding means so much more. It 
resonates so much more if these guys are the individuals. Yeah, no, um, I remember this a while ago that uh, half the point of this show is to make make you care about the punk so that when one of them dies, it's not just like collateral damage and like losing movies. That's it's right. Important. That's right. They're not. They're not robots. They're not. They're not. It's, it's the humans fighting the robots. Uh, and a lot of grown-ups that I know, I guess I'm one too now, uh, who aren't familiar with this series, they say, I, they say, what do you do in the show? And I say, well, I voice the clones in the show. And they go off and watch the show and they say, oh, I heard you, you know, it's the robot voice. It's really good robot. It's like, no, the clones aren't the robots. The clones are the humans. <laughs> you have to do some really interesting stuff in season two. I mean, last time we talked, season two was just sort of twinkling in everyone's eye. Uh, yeah. But, uh, there was that episode, that really interesting moral, philosophical debate between the clone and the runaway. The Deserter. The Deserter. It's one of my favorite episodes. It was really good. Cool. I just watched it on, on my iPad on the way out here, and it really, it's one of my very favorites, because I am a dad, and, and that whole issue, uh, there's a lot of issues, but you know, breaking ranks, uh, protecting your family versus uh, larger obligations that you've sworn allegiance to, and, and just done in a, in, a, in, a, in a very small but compelling way. Uh, it still has all this awesome stuff from Grievous versus Obi-Wan, but you, you get uh, the commando droids coming in after the children. It's, it, 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 that particular episode really grabs me. I really, I really like that. And there's some really cool science fiction stuff to it, too. I mean, like the morality of clones, <laughs> like what place do these guys have to be in? That kind of stuff is all like, fascinating. And you read libraries with a really good content. Oh great! Well, I'm glad that I'm glad that you feel that way. It's uh, it's really essential, and, and, and I mean, just as a fan of this kind of uh, thing and, and of this show in particular, I mean, <laughs> the further you get into the series, for me, the more I like these guys, these uh, clones, and and but the closer we get to uh, Order 66 and and to everything just completely flipping around and, and everything going to hell in a handbasket and uh, I mean it's, I, I always say that what I'm what increasingly I want to know because I, I, I know you know how pretty much everything else plays out because I want to know what happens to Rex and I want to know what happens to so yeah because by, you know, by the time you're in episode 3 where did they go well these are no small characters in this television series. They're they're really important. They're, they're almost they're almost the everyman characters in this series. And as such, I want to know what what happens to them. I really do. <laughs> it's, it sounds like you approach the show like like a viewer. Like it sounds like I am. I mean, do you watch with your kids? Yes, I do. Yeah, I mean, I I love Star Wars since I was a kid. I, I, I saw it. I saw it. The day it opened and the day after it opened, I, I actually read about it before I came out here. Had my folks make me a Jawa costume the Halloween after. And then the next summer, when they re-released it in 78, I was hired by the local movie theater to wear my Jawa costume, scare people as a Jawa, make Jawa sounds, and watch Star Wars all summer long. And they gave me movie passes. Which is, that's the that's a dream. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> So, so I mean, you do you do voices on other characters too? I know. Yeah. Mary the Plow. Mary is great. That's that's a great gig right there. I just I made that sound once, and they reprinted every show. <laughs> But they, they also have me do incidentals on that show as yeah. well. You know, delivery guy or high school kid number five or whatever. So I, I, I'm other voices. I'm kind of amazed like that show has. I mean, I'm not amazed. I mean, it's a show. Um, but for like my kids, I took my kids to Comic Con. And while I was doing Star Wars stuff or uh, all of my press stuff, they were going to the Phoenix Open. And it's like, it's, it's this kind of geek vibe to it, not just on the show, but even behind the scenes, we're like, that's the next, next generation of Comic Con goers and whatever. Yeah, it, it, it has a broad appeal that you do not find in a lot of shows. The only show I can think of that's similar in, in a lot of ways um, is SpongeBob, where you've got the very young all the way up to the very old. 
they like it and they watch it and they love it. And I think part of the reason for that, uh, for me, because I watch it a lot with my kids, um, is that there's there's a, there's a sweetness at the center, not a sourness, and, and uh, there's not a lot of sarcasm. The parents aren't a couple of idiots, uh, but it's very intelligent, very smart, very funny, not talking down to anybody. It's got really good songs on it too. That's that's one of the things I, I, I always I've always. I always say that, that, in a way, animation is the last bastion of melody in our culture uh, because all other forms of delivery of good song are either completely corrupt or dying or both, <laughs> or dead. <laughs> and, uh, but you can go to a cartoon like Phineas and Ferb, and there are a lot of good, I, well, you can go to Phineas and Ferb, and, and you can get a, a nice song. It's funny, and it's a humble, good little song every episode. Not a lot of shows you can do that, but animation can bring that to you. I mean, in a broader context, uh, I mean, like video games, for instance. I do these video games live concerts with uh, Tommy Tallarico. They just did a PBS special on that. Uh, he, he lets me go on and make weird sounds every once in a while. And, and I really love how video games have brought programmatic music, orchestral music, to the ears of, of kids all the way up to adults in a way that a regular concert cannot. It's a really positive thing, one of the many positive things about video games. Yeah, I, uh, I brought my kids when I did San Diego yeah. at the con, and they, they loved it until they fell asleep. Yeah. It was, it's after the con. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, uh, no, that's... It connects people to music, and it also connects people to video games. Do that. That's what I like about video games. What's the next thing? So as far as as far as video games, I mean, obviously there's been some some Clone Wars video games, mm -hmm. and there's some uh, really great ones coming out. And that's what I was going to ask you about. What kind of stuff have you done video games wise for uh, upcoming Star Wars? Uh, I'm on a number of them, but I, I the thing is I can't keep them straight in my mind. I, 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 I'm involved with Force Unleashed 2. In fact, I think I, I made. I think I'm in all of them. Uh, yes, I think so. But I, the thing is, I haven't played them, and a lot of times I haven't seen it uh, at all. I mean, I haven't been shown gameplay or anything. We just recorded, you know, months back, a bunch of lines, and so I can't talk. I can't talk with any authority about the game yet. <laughs> but there's, there's. I think there's at least three that are that are about to come out. That uh, I was pretty, pretty, pretty heavily involved in. What uh, what what kind of voices were you doing for like voice and voice? Or can you not say that? Um, I'm not sure if I can talk specifically, but I mean, you can well imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, there, there's. Uh, Okay, there's there's one there's one voice that is a new character that is very evil and is a new character. Past that, I don't think I can say. Other stuff is stuff that, that I, I have done or, or, or along those lines in any case. <laughs> but again, I'm I'm not a good I'm not a great source for it because I I can't keep it straight. That's fine. Um, back to Clone Wars and Star Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Keep going, keep going soldier. Keep going. Um, of the, the the episodes in season three, like what aside from the premiere, sort of I mean, really did this and again, I know I'm trying to record this as vaguely as possible to make sure you can answer. Yeah. Um, is there anything you can tell us that you're really looking forward to other than the premiere? Which we okay, I can tell you. Um, I don't know if I can, but I'm going to tell you. Uh, I really love Ventress. I think Ventress is an awesome villain. You'll, this will be demonstrated once again. The, the, the amazing Ventress will, will be on full display at the season premiere. It'll be the two-parter on September 17th. Uh, but she's also involved in some stories uh, in season three that are very interesting, um, that may, may, not, may not, the great, the great thing about this series, to me, is that uh, it will take things in a direction sometimes that you don't necessarily anticipate. Um, and they'll take characters where you thought one thing and put them through something and something else will happen. Uh, 
So uh, watch, watch what happens. Watch the storyline of that. It's very interesting. There's there's a lot of other stuff that that is, that is coming down that I only partially remember or can't talk about because <laughs> yeah. we recorded a long time ago. What's, what's crazy about that is that, like, what's great about the show is that like, even you just saying that launched a thousand possibilities in my head and this crazy idea and, like, wow, what adventurous, like, because in the trailer yeah. it seems like she's gunning for a second mm-hmm. and, and yeah. everybody's thinking, wow, so his days are numbered. Adventurous is actually trying to, like, talk to her. No but that's okay. That's an interesting idea. But it is an interesting idea. I, just, I doubt the go there, but, but that's the great thing about the show is that like you can see things going in the future, and even though people write it off as like, well, we've seen episode two, we've seen episode three, we know how everything turns out, but it can still raise questions like that, where there are plenty of possibilities. Yep. <laughs> I wish I could tell you more. I wish you could too. I've got a friend who's a lighter in Singapore, and all we used to talk about was Star Wars. And since he got a job on Clone Wars doing lighting in Singapore, we can't talk anymore. It's terrible. To me, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, as a, I'm, I'm a performer. I'm, 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 as an actor, I, I want to get the story out. And I, I don't think you, I don't think you, myself, personally, I don't think you lose anything by holding back the secrets. I, I think, no, no, I think by, by, by letting stuff out, which they're, which they're going to let out actually more than they ever have actually uh, on our, they're going to show some stuff as I understand it. That's more than they've ever done. I think that's a great way to fire interest. Not just interest, I'm, I'm talking about like, you have an enthusiasm for Star Wars. Oh, yeah. And uh, you're a fan. Yes. And one of my favorite parts of, of fandom and being a fan is just to be able to sit with, I, I guess you have the crew and, and those guys that you can kind of just geek out about a bit, but like, um, you know, my friend in Singapore is like, you know, not everybody speaks English, and like, I mean, he moved from LA to Singapore just to work on Clone Wars, and uh, he's sort of like the biggest fan out there, and he doesn't have anybody to geek out about it. So, I, you know, it'd be great if we could have a, one friend of the employee in the A to sign. Yeah, it would. But, um, it's, it's a very, I mean, it's a very. It's very secretive, and they, they hold very tight control on it. And I mean, in the end, you just look at the results. It's like I, I can't argue with anything. It, yeah. it's, it's such yeah. an amazing result. You, uh, however you run it, go for no, it. I, I, I love, I do love that mystery behind it. I really do, and I love. Try, I try to avoid even the trailers for the next episode of uh, Clone Wars just because I just want to see what's coming up. I just want to, yeah. I just want to get it on Blu-ray. I just, I don't want to see it on TV. I don't, I don't. I just want to get it on Blu-ray. I want to get full aspect ratio, high definition, free from commercials and logos. I want to see it in all of its gorgeousness. Because, I mean, having been up to the ranch once where they last year for a press junket where they showed me like six episodes back to back, digitally projected in a pristine setting. I, I, I would pay good money to watch this series like that, rather than on television. Or TV. <laughs> I want to. I'm surprised they haven't or- let theaters organize. You know, Friday nights, yeah. go to the theater and watch Clone Wars with 250 other stuff. I love that idea. I, I absolutely love it. I wish I would. I would be there because these deserve to be seen in optimal conditions because they are positively cinematic, increasingly so, as the fans will see in season three. It's, it's yeah, increasingly it's, cinematic. The stuff they've shown is really It's sick. Like, it's ridiculous. I mean, I look, it's like, I, if, if I'm just walking by, it's like, I can't tell. I have to look at it for a bit to see, is that from the features or is that from... Is it a gate? No. No? I guess that's our show. I, <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell. Well, I mean, one of the big reveals they made yesterday was the Republic Commanders. Uh, is there anything? You got ARC Troopers, you got, you got Republic Commandos, you got... They're, they're not... They're, they, are, they are pushing this, all of this out further. This is, this is not uh, resting on morals or just idle. They, they are moving all of this out further. I mean, Dave has, a, has an excellent 
uh, awareness of, of the fan base and of, of the, in addition to what George is interested in. So he's, he's very much, and the writers are very invested in, in moving this out into all these little corners that were previously maybe just indicated or shown in a brief flash, but that are, are now being brought out. I mean, there's. You've seen in the in, in a trailer. There, there's a Jedi that I don't, I don't think I don't think we've seen her before. first in the opening uh, uh, in the opening uh, two episodes. That's just absolutely captivating. Yeah, can't take my eyes off. Just captivating. I mean, yeah, I, I, she's amazing. Yeah, no, I'm, everybody, uh, I've had questions of people wondering when she's going to be on the show, and Dave said yesterday part of the reason she wasn't on the show is because they were really confused with the show. Um, but now that she's on, yep. that's, uh, she has a key role in, this, in the first uh, two-parter, and she's great. You just really love her. Yeah. <laughs> um, well... Behind the schedule, but uh, thank you for doing this. Thank you for time and being my pleasure. And being great about it. It's my pleasure. Um, it's it's you're going to have a lot more to like here in a few weeks. <laughs> well, the show has gotten exponentially better. I mean, I walked into the movie and. That was my first exposure with it. Yep. And I liked it, but I could tell it was three episodes scotch taped together. That's right. And I don't think maybe... I think a lot of what you guys are doing now on the show is just sort of making up for that almost. Like, I'm not sure why they decided to put those three episodes out as a movie, because even the next arc that Malevolent would have yep. played much better in theaters, actually. Well, they... they I mean, I, I don't I don't really know the, the decision making original decision making process, but it, it's 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 uh, eminently clear that like, like you're saying is that they are they're making leaps and bounds in their progress in terms of detail, expressiveness, and, and just how they can render this world, the stories, the writing. I mean, I mean, like, Rookies was a big chance. They took a big chance with that episode because it was, I mean, we recorded that and then they wrote that before this show was even airing and they had no idea if anybody, uh, you know, all the fans who like Anakin and, and Obi-Wan and Darth you know, and everything else, if they'd even want to listen to a bunch of clones talk for half an hour for 20 minutes. Is it satisfying that you have all received that episode? Oh, I, 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 yeah, I mean, I, that's, I'm very proud of that. That's, uh, it, it, in so many different ways, but it's it, it's a real testimony to, to the smarts that Lucas and of the writing team that they have, and, and Dave and everybody that they were that they that they're in a creative culture there that supports that kind of creative risk uh, to to really push things out and push things forward. So it's not just showing the same thing over and over again, and, and that it paid off so beautifully. It's, it's incredibly exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't argue with that. So, all right. Thank you again. Yeah, it's my pleasure.